and this year, this is the first year that we've we've had time to ourselves to be able to come down to Casablanca and actually have a proper attempt at it. The easiest line on there, the Espelon Central, is is HS 4B, I think, but 13 pitches of it. So 13 pitches of HS, I think, is pretty sustained. It's pitch after pitch of of solid HS climbing. The guidebook recommends 10 hours, at least 10 hours of climbing time, but in in November, the time of year that we're here now, you only have 10 hours of daylight pretty much. There's not a lot of wiggle room for things to go wrong. So yeah, once you're up there, you're fully committed. And I think the daylight was one of the things that concerned us the most. Decided to get there at first light, which meant leaving at 6.30 in the morning to, to walk up there, to be there as dawn, dawn was breaking. Today's going to be a big day. We've got 13 pitches to climb. Espelon Central. Espelon Central. So it goes all the way up there. It's mainly trad, what, it's trad climbing with, I think, bolted belays. Um, gets HS as a trad grade. Yeah, like four plus is sport. Is four the, plus is sport, that. but there's no bolts. But yeah, it should be a good day out. Uh, it looks fun, it's quite windy, so that could be exciting as we get higher. It's quite a committing route, um, it's quite long. Don't think there's any professional mountain rescue services like there are in the UK. So essentially if you get, get in trouble, you can't do it, kind of got to look after yourself. The guidebook splits it up into two Three pitches. Two normal size pitches, but I think we're going to run the first two pitches together. First pitch goes from where we are up to about there, and then pitch two goes up that way to the skyline. Hello. All right, game on. So that's top of pitches one and two. Yeah, did it in one pitch. Did it in one pitch, it was good. A couple of airy moments. Um, but yeah. A little bit of a spice moment going over that. I don't know what it was. I want to say it was a flake, but it wasn't really. It was like a detached block. Yeah, a sort of hanging block that didn't look the most secure. But yeah, we're here. So, next pitch. Slightly easier pitch up here. Three pitches kind of get you up to a big ledge and um, from the big ledge you then got an easy traverse across to I guess where the sort of the main central ridge line starts proper and that's when you start getting into all the sort of airy positions and re really start getting the character of the route come in. So then I had to like sling that big spike down like traverse across, climb above and then try and flick the sling off. Used to be there, we'll just keep going. So I really hope this rope's long pegs. enough. I saw two pegs and these, I was like, this is one of the other reefs that joins in. <laughs> yeah. The wind just seemed to pick up more and more through the day, and that was definitely adding to the excitement factor. Trying to, on the more balancey sections, I mean, climbing with a rucksack on affects where, you, where your center of gravity is and, and how freely you move anyway. But then when you're getting these really big gusts of wind trying to sort of blow across you. <laughs> yeah, you do end up holding on quite a bit tighter than you perhaps normally would. There's bits of loose rock in places which kind of up the spice level a little bit. There also there's a few sort of few bits where there wasn't loads of gear. A couple of boulder sections, like one bold section in particular, just protected by this really old wobbly piton which you could wiggle with your fingers, which focused you on the climbing.
box count. No idea. I think this is the top. This is going to be pitch 13. I think. Yeah. Oh, it's nice for this belay to be out of the wind. These mm. other, it's been so windy on that ridge. I felt like I was going to get blown off. Well, I did get blown off, but. Well, we're at the top. Yeah, we are at the top. Now we're going to get off. Yeah, apparently the get off is quite exciting as well. Yeah, just lanyarding up into the harnesses so that we've got cow's tails to clip into the chains. Well, cables, I think. That's what the guidebook says. Yeah. Seven and a half hours. Seven and a half hours. <laughs> Seven and a half hours later, <laughs> we are at the top. <laughs> now we're just gonna get off. Uh, 3.30, okay, that means we've got two and a half hours of daylight left. And you have to do this big, long, kind of scrambly traverse, but there's fixed cables in place for the trickier sections to give you some kind of safety. Although, I wouldn't want to fall off on a static sling onto a fixed cable. There's big gaps in the cable, so you, you sort of have 10 meters of cable for a tricky section and then you'd have 50 meters 100 meters of sort of scrambling or across and then you'd find another short little section of cable once you've done all that then you just get down to a big scree shoot in in a valley um, and you follow that back down towards the the base of the climb all right back to the van dinner i think if you're thinking about climbing it just make sure that you're prepared and you've got skill set it's not a place for beginners or people which haven't done a lot of multi-pitch climbing don't underestimate how long it's going to take you it's a long route and the descent on its own um, you're looking at sort of two hours and things like that and and it it would be quite difficult doing that that first section across trying to route find in the dark and things so make sure you've got plenty of daylight I think it's a great route, but I think it's a route for experienced multi-pitch climbers, probably who have got a grade or grade or two in hand. I've been looking at that lump of rock for a lot of years, wanting to climb it, so it's nice to finally get it sent.